climbing here. We're doing a slightly different location here to see how it works. And I want to talk today about the difference between homosexualism and pseudo-bisexualism. Because it's quite clear that either this is not well understood or some people are fibbing. So let's look at this difference. In both cases, the individuals who are talking about male to feminine transsexuals are attracted to men. In homosexual transsexualism, that's exclusive and they have been attracted to men all their lives. They're, they're, they've never been attracted to anyone else. They don't have any romantic interest in women whatsoever. They will never have had a serious relationship with women. With a woman, they will not have had desire for that. Um, they almost certainly will not have ever had sex with a woman. And if they did, they didn't want to have it. The Ray Blanchard put it very clearly, and he was right. He said that homosexual transsexuals desire women, uh, desire men's bodies in exactly the same way as a woman does. I can't put it better than that. It's exactly what it's like. Now, pseudobisexualism is something else altogether. Pseudobisexualism is actually a function of non-homosexual transsexualism. In, again, male to feminine. I'm sorry, you're going to have to put up with the cockerel next door. This is the Philippines. Things are a little different. Anyway, non-homosexual Transsexualism is normally called autogynophilic transsexualism, as that is the term that we will use. Autogynophilia being, as we know, a man's love for himself, but as a woman. So how does pseudo-bisexualism occur and how frequent is it? Well, to answer the, the, the second, first, in Blanchard's study, which remember he was working in the 1980s doing his primary research, about 20% of his sample were attracted to men, right? Or oh, it's twenty percent of his sample of autogynophilics, that is, were attracted to men. The other of the rest, twenty percent were anal or erotic, they didn't have sex with anyone, and the remainder of sixty percent were had a conventional male sexuality, they, they were attracted to women, to their heterosexual males, who wished to appear to to appear to be women. So we're talking about a group here which in the West is one of the smaller groups within what is already a small group. In Asia, pseudobisexualism, that is those autogynophilic transsexuals who are attracted to men, are much more common. In fact, I would put it, oh, it's certainly 90%. It might be more of uh, autogynophilic transsexuals who are common in Asia are attracted to men and are pseudo-bisexual. So let's talk for a moment about what pseudo-bisexualism actually is and how it differs from homosexuality. And to do that, you have to go back to the, your understanding of what is autogynophilia. And remember, in autogynophilia, and I've discussed this in other videos, a second character is created. The, the, the male subject creates a second pseudo-feminine character whom he falls in love with. He becomes romantically attached to. He becomes sexually attracted to. Uh, because this second character, because he is heterosexual, this second character has to be a woman. Okay? It couldn't be anything else. He's a straight guy, so he's only going to be attracted to women in the initial stages. So, what happens is that he invents a second character, who is a woman, whom he uh, nourishes, this, nourishes his second personality through things like, he feeds it, he basically feeds it. He might masturbate, he might dress, he might uh, go online and seek affirmation. There are a whole bunch of things that he could do that would affirm his autogynophilia. Till the point at which and it doesn't always happen, but it happens in many cases, and it seems to be increasing in the West, that the second character can become so strong that it actually takes over and it becomes the dominant force within the person. And the original male character dies, or at least is so suppressed that it might as well be dead. It doesn't continue, it no longer has any function in the 
ongoing running of the personality. So this second, so, so this second uh, pseudo-feminine personality becomes very powerful. It thinks it is a woman. Now, one of the things that can happen, and that which explains pseudo-accessualism, is that this pseudo-feminine character wants to experience sex as a woman. And that's using Blanchard's precise words, sex as a woman. It's really powerful. And of course, it's very affirming. If you can persuade a man to have sex with you, to pursue you and have sex with you as a woman, thinking that you're a woman, then this is very strong. It makes it like, well, yes, I really am a woman. At least I am being accepted as a woman. And so this causes a huge reward inside the only kind of Felix's head. And then what happens is, if they like having sex like that, they'll get more so. So what will typically happen is that they'll engage a guy, they'll meet a guy, somehow or another, seduce him, somehow get him back or into a situation where they can have sex. They will then have sex, in which the uh, pseudo-bisexual autogenetic person is penetrated. And because that person has very stereotypical ideas of what being a woman is, which I'm not saying are wrong, but they are stereotypical, uh, being penetrated affirms the idea that he's actually a woman. Right? And if he takes pleasure in it, if it's not so painful he can't do it, it might be that he likes it. And if he likes it, then it's going to get more intense. He's going to want to do it again. You know, sex is the most affirming thing that we do as humans. So if you have sex in a certain way and you like it, you're going to do it again. You're going to want to keep doing it. So that's one of the, 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 the reasons why pseudo-bisexualism happens. The other reason is slightly more complex, because, and it happens because many... Uh, autogynophilic males are extremely homophobic, far more so than they will ever admit. And for some, not for all by any, but for some, the idea of women having sex with other women is offensive to them. So they have to have sex with men when they're presenting as a woman. And they are unable to have sex with men when they're presenting as men. So they can only have sex with men when they're women, when they're presenting as women. And certainly, I've talked about this with autogynophilic transsexuals, and they've said, yeah, I, I, when I started off with this, I, I was unable to have sex with men because I was a man myself. You know? It was only when I became a woman that I was able to do it. That's a very clear indication of pseudo-bisexualism in an autogynophilic male. Believe me, a homosexual transsexual does not have any of that kind of reservation. She just wants a man. And, you know, <laughs> she, if the man is prepared to, to, to have sex with her, to penetrate her, and to, to play the role that she seeks to have played with her, while she's still in a boy mode, then she's not going to be bothered by that. That's fine. That's okay. This is not something she's going to think twice about. She desires a man's body in the same way as a woman does. She just wants sex with men. For the autogynophilic, it's much more complicated, as you should be able to see. The autogynophilic is thinking about all sorts of things like, how do I appear? How do these relationships appear in society? How do they look to the outside world? And what's happening in this particular case is that the autogynophilic character is resisting having sex with men, or perhaps is not even interested in having sex with men, until their secondary feminine character, pseudo-feminine character, is sufficiently strong that they can actually go out, meet men, and attract them as women. At which point, they, yes, an auto, uh, a pseudo-bisexual autogynophile will have sex with men. And the singing in the background, by the way, is my very homosexual, transsexual girlfriend just being her wonderful self. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's amazing what you have to live with. Anyway, when a, a pseudo bisexual autogynophilic has sex, that's not really the person. The, the person 
the real person behind Kate and Jenner, behind Riley Dennis, behind all this, is a man. A man who is consumed with the idea of appearing to be a woman. So if you have sex with a person like this, and I have, you're having sex with a proxy. It's not really the same, the, the person that you're there with. It's this kind of avatar that they've created that's having sex with you. And it's always at a distance. There's always this remove from reality, which I have to tell you is an extremely weird feeling. You know, sex is a really intimate thing to do, you know. It really does, it's supposed to bring people very closely together, you know. It's the, the, the principal part of the, uh, the non-related human bonding between male and female um, mechanism. It's sex, you know, you have sex with a woman and a man, and, and you bond, and you get this strong, very, very strong bond. But it's with the person. It's with that person, right? In pseudo-bisexualism, if you have sex with a pseudo-bisexual autogynophile, man with woman, or man with apparent woman, it's, it's like you're doing it with a sex doll or a robot. It's not the real person. And it's, it's very disconcerting. I have to say that there are many pseudo-bisexual autogynophiles out there, um, particularly in Southeast Asia, who really enjoy sex this way. I'm not saying they don't like it. I mean, they do something that's pleasant often enough. You're going to want to do it more and more and more and more. And it's going to be, you know, something that, that you like doing, that you're going to be encouraged to do. And of course, a lot of Westerners, you know, when they think about uh, transsexuals in Asia, they're thinking about um, people who are basically prostitutes. So if you're getting sexual reward and you're getting paid for it, ooh, <laughs> You know, it's a really big hit. Now, of course you're going to want to keep doing it. You're going to, yeah, it's good fun. It feels good. And I get loads of money. Oh, yeah. And so I'm not saying that other guys kind of don't like sex as women. They do. In many cases, they often, they really, really do. But there's this weird mismatch when you're actually having sex with them. Who am I having sex with, you know? And you know it's not really the person that's in your arms. Which is a very strange concept, I know. And it's not at all what, like having sex with a homosexual transsexual. In that situation, you know, it's absolutely direct. It's completely bang, but then you are communicating directly with the real person. And there's no, there's no proxy, there's no layers of extra characters or anything. It's all going on like that. No, 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 no. This is direct. And it's, uh, you know, you both really feel it, which is the way that sex should be. Let's be honest. And, you know, I know a lot of uh, US Americans are <sighs> prudish about discussing sex, but you shouldn't be. I mean, it's a major part of human life, and after all, we are here to reproduce, which you can't do without sex, so you know, you should be at least be prepared to talk about it. And so, sorry, um, these differences are quite telling but it really is quite an important thing. So I was asked quite recently, how can it be that a woman, a trans woman, sorry, a trans woman, a male to feminine trans woman, who is exclusively attracted to, to men, can possibly be autogynophilic? And this is how. It's because it's pseudo-bisexualism. And at the same time, she's not able to have her sex with women because in female role, she would regard that as homosexual and she's not attracted. She doesn't want that. Her female character wants sex with men because it's affirming and she will continue to do it. And especially if she finds it pleasant, it's going to become something that she wants to do on a regular basis. So the, it's not even surprising that there are, are autogynophilic transsexuals who are only attracted to men. When we talk about bisexualism, and I'm talking about you know, real bisexualism rather than pseudo-bisexualism, it's, it's a really not well understood sexuality. Uh, lots of people think that bisexuals are like, oh, today I love John and tomorrow I love Jill and then the next day after that it'll be Frank and the day after that will be Francis. Well, it's not how it works. A lot of bisexuals, they only ever have sex with one other sex. I mean, they might only have sex, we're talking about males here, they might only have sex with men. Or they might only have sex with women. 
And one reason for that is, for example, if we consider that our gay society, within gay culture, and the new gay, gay man society in the West, the, uh, wait, stop. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, I'm stop. I'll, I'll cut that, I'll cut this bit. You can come and sit on my knee and do something. Sorry, my girlfriend. Within new gay, man, new gay man society in the West, bisexuals are deeply mistrusted because the, uh, the homosexual men who are their sexual targets usually are very suspicious. They think, well, you know, you're not fully committed to being gay, so, you know, you might have sex with me and then you'll just go with you because you're also having sex with women, so you're going to go off and do that. And so there's this, this, is this pressure to be, to conform to social norms. Um, and if you do that, you might actually get some sex. So you can see why this is genuine bisexual males are actually appear as gay men because that way they're accepted within the gay community and they can have sex within it. And if they're having sex with women, outside of that, it's very much on the QT, you know. And by the same token, you'll get the bisexual men who are married um, and who are having sex with men on the side. Well, they're bisexuals. You know? If somebody has been married happily for 10 years and then suddenly says, um, mm, I can't start dating men, that's a bisexual. That's not a homosexual guy. That's bisexual. He is attracted to both males and females. It's simple as that. Pseudo-bisexualism really isn't like that. It's, it's not visceral, it's not about bodies, it's, it's about affirming a self-image of oneself as a woman by having sex as a woman. Okay? And it should be therefore easy to understand why some pseudo-bisexual autogenetic males, trans women, are only attracted to men. It's because if they were attracted to women, they would see that as conflicting with their self-identity as women. Because remember, they're, they're heterosexual, so when they flip into the female character, they also want to be heterosexual. And so, oh gosh, you know, how can I have sex with women? That would be homosexual. I'm not homosexual. So they want to have sex with men. So it, it's, it's it, yes, absolutely, it does re reinforce stereotypes, but I've already said in other videos, that if you take away stereotypes, you, 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 get, you get rid of transsexualism completely. It doesn't exist. Of course there are stereotypes. It's, all, it's not all about stereotypes, but it's a significant part of this phenomenon. Gender is a real thing. It's innate. It's not a social construct. And so when people do this, they're doing it for very deep reasons, which are sexual in nature. Um, and so pseudo-bisexualism is not a passing fancy. You know, it's not just a airy fairy thing. It's a very seriously, deeply held set of feelings that the person has. But at the same time, it's different from the feelings that a homosexual would have. With her, it's raw and direct. And it's, it's just like, it's the same as a woman. Having sex with a homosexual transsexual is exactly the same. Leaving aside the geography, it's, it's the same in terms of the passion, the emotions, the feelings. It's, it's, they're girls. I'm sorry, they just are. And they have a, a completely feminized sexuality, so that you can't really tell the difference other than you know the, the mechanics of it. With pseudo bisexualism, oh no, it's totally different. And you, you're aware very, very quickly that it's just not the same. Now, I'm not saying it's not pleasant, I'm not saying that it can't be rewarding. All of these are true, and many men have very good relationships with pseudo-bisexual autogynophiles. I'm not saying that's impossible. What I'm saying is the fact that you're uniquely attracted to men when you are a woman does not mean you're homosexual transsexual. You could well be out again, Philip. And of course, the, the, the real tell is things like the age of onset. If your if you're, um, gender dysphoria start to onset in your teens, not, nothing before puberty, mm. you, the likelihood is you're out again, Philip, and not homosexual. Homosexual transsexuals, they always have very clear early life history in which their, their, the nature of their sexuality is, is obvious to everyone around them. 
and it will be corroborated. If you go and ask their parents or their uncles and aunts, you know, they'll say, oh yeah, you know, he was always a gay that one, you know. You'll never get that with a, 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 an African family, never. The people say, I was totally surprised, just a normal boy. Sometimes they're a little bit geeky, they're a little bit withdrawn, you know. They can be sometimes like ex try excessively hard to to conform or to please, but they don't appear to have this lust for men, which is typical of homosexual transsexuals. So, to make it all very short, homosexual transsexualism is a condition in which the passion for men is a real passion, and it's exactly the same as that which we find in the case of heterosexual women. Suited by sexual desire for men is about a proxy, a proxy character and personality being allowed to live out its life and, and for the, the host to, 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 to experience what it is like to be affirmed as a woman through sex. It's, it's a very, very different thing. I'm not saying that um, sex for homosexual transsexuals is not affirming, of course it is. It's affirming for all of us, you know, we're all affirmed by good sex. But in the homosexual, in the Aussie gynephilic transsexual case, they're being affirmed. It's the pseudo personality that's being affirmed, not the real one. So I'm going to stop it there because that's quite long enough for one. But this is a very important difference because you will hear clearly autogynephilic transsexuals on all sorts of fora uh, saying, oh gosh, I'm not really autogynephilic because they, for some reason they're always in denial. Because of this reason, because they're attracted to men. Well, I'm sorry, that is not. Come here. And I want you to introduce you to my girlfriend. Here she is. Come on. You sit hello. down there. Right. What? You say hello to the nice people on YouTube. Hello. It's, this is Sam. And isn't Sam absolutely beautiful? I don't want to love her a bit. She's just gorgeous. Come here. Don't you be running over. Yeah, it's cool enough for you. It's next door. And you say hello to the nice people. And where are you going now? Where are you going now, Sam? Check the money. You're going to go and do some business. But Sam's got a little business. So she's going to get collect some cash. Okay, Bobby. Give me a kiss. Mm -hmm. Love you. Go on. Catch you later, okay? I'll wind up now. Right, okay folks, that's it. That's all you get.